Welcome to this video on rate of reactions. Here we're going to look at the factors that affect how fast a reaction happens. So the first thing you need to know is that reactions happen when compounds or atoms collide together. And this is called collision theory, talking about what happens when the two compounds collide. The first thing that needs to happen, there needs to be enough energy when the two atoms or molecules collide. The second thing is that there needs to be enough frequency of collisions. They need to happen often enough for a reaction to actually take place. So this is collision theory. We're going to cover two graphs which explain this exact same idea. The first graph explains a thing called activation energy. But when a compound's coming in to collide, ready for an effective reaction, it needs enough energy so it can come over this energy bump and down the other side. And how much energy it needs is called activation energy. This is the minimum amount of energy required for a reaction to take place. So if your compound is traveling too slowly, it won't have enough energy to get over this energy bump and no reaction will take place. So that's the first condition. And the word you need to remember is activation energy. Another way to look at this is that there's a certain average temperature that your reactants will have. The really hot atoms up the top are going to have lots of energy, so they'll have lots of effective collisions. But the colder molecules won't have as many effective collisions. And therefore, if your average temperature is low, there won't be a high frequency of collisions because lots of the reactants won't have enough energy. But if we increase the average temperature, then lots of molecules are going to be above this cutoff energy point. They'll have enough energy to react, and therefore there can be lots of collisions. So this is the second graph we need to look at. Now let's look at four factors that talk about this collision theory. The first is temperature. Temperature will affect how fast a reaction has because one, a high temperature means high energy. So increasing the temperature gives your reactants lots of energy and it means that lots of the atoms are going to have enough energy so there'll be a higher frequency of reaction. So it ticks both of our boxes for collision theory. The second one is concentration. If you jam a whole bunch of reactants into a small space, there's going to be lots and lots of collisions. So there'll be a high frequency of collision. That ticks our second point for collision theory. The third factor is surface area. If you had some solid reactant and you broke it up into a powder rather than having it as a solid ball, it's going to react faster. Because with more surface area, the reactants are going to be bumping into each other much faster. And therefore, there's a higher frequency of collision. That's point number two for our collision theory. And finally, there's something called a catalyst. This isn't something we've covered before, but what it means is that there's some extra reagent in there. Some kind of molecule which will bring together both of our reactants and join them, much like a person putting together pieces of a puzzle. What this does is it lowers the activation energy. Things don't need to be going as quickly to react because these catalysts will help bring them together in the right kind of way. Also, they'll help a higher frequency of reactions because they can bring together more reactants than the reactants could do by themselves. So these are the four factors, and here's what you need to know. You need to know that to have a reaction occurring, you need effective collision of particles. And this is called collision theory. So this means that number one, molecules have a high enough energy for an effective collision. And this is called the activation energy that you'll need. And secondly, you'll need a high enough frequency of collisions. So when we look at our graph, if we have a low temperature, for example, there's only a small number of reactants that will have enough energy, have energy greater than our cutoff point. But if we increase our average temperature, a whole bunch of the reactants are going to have enough energy and reactions will occur. So using these two key ideas, there are four factors that will influence our rate of reaction. This is temperature. A hotter temperature means it can overcome the activation energy and more particles can actually react, will have enough energy. Secondly is surface area. A high surface area means lots of collisions because there'll be more reactants bumping into each other and therefore a faster rate of reaction. If we have a high concentration, so we have more molecules jammed into the same space, again, that gives us a higher frequency of collisions and therefore a faster rate of reaction. And finally, catalysts. They bring together two reactants so they can react together. And this lowers the amount of energy that the atoms actually need and means that there's a higher frequency of collisions. So in both counts, this increases the rate of reaction. Let's look at a question now. This first part of the question is quite wordy. You don't actually need to understand the chemistry, you just need to remember collision theory. So let's go through this slowly. We react hydrochloric acid 
and sodium thiosulfate. And this produces a precipitate, which is a cloudy powder when the two things react. So this makes the solution go cloudy because of the powder. The reaction is carried out in a conical flask, this thing here, which has been placed over the top of a piece of paper with an X on it. So when you look right down the conical flask, you can see the X sitting on the desk. So this rate of reaction can be measured by timing how long it takes for the solution to go cloudy. And when it's really cloudy, you can no longer look down and view the X. So if we have a timer and the X disappears really quickly, it must be a fast rate of reaction. If we're looking down here and the X disappears really slowly, it must be a slow rate of reaction. So we need to explain how decreasing the concentration of sodium thiosulfate and decreasing the temperature affects the rate of reaction. So we're going to talk about particle collision, activation energy, and the reaction that's actually taking place here. So the main thing we need to look at is collision theory. So firstly, we need to write down that there must be enough energy for an effective collision, and two, that there must be a high enough frequency of collisions. So if we decrease the concentration, let's look at what happens. First, decreasing concentration means fewer particles in the same space. So if there's fewer particles, this will decrease the frequency of collisions. That's point number two. So less particles are going to react and there is a slower rate of reaction. Now if we look at temperature, if we decrease the temperature, that means every particle has lower speed, so less energy. Also, there's not as many collisions, because if they're buzzing around really, really quickly, they're going to collide with lots of different particles. But this isn't the case if you decrease the temperature. So we have lower energy of collisions, we have less particles reacting, therefore there's a slower rate of reaction. So this is the core of how collision theory applies to this problem. But remember, we also need to write this in a full answer that includes activation energy and the specific reaction that they've asked us about in the question. So here's the type of answer you could write just using this information. So for a reaction to occur, particles have to collide and the collisions must be effective. So to be effective, it means they have to have enough energy, which is an energy greater than the activation energy. So activation energy, remember, which is written down, is the minimum energy a particle needs to react when it does collide. So when the concentration is decreased, like they said in the question, there's a decreased frequency of collisions between particles. So fewer particles actually react, and the rate of reaction decreases. And when the temperature is decreased, kinetic energy decreases, the speed of the particles decreases, because that's what kinetic energy is, and this means that particles collide less frequently. It also means that particles collide with less energy, so they have less effective collisions, because fewer particles have energy greater than the activation energy. So I've re-explained activation energy, you don't need to write it again, but in both instances, if you dilute the solution, so decrease the concentration, and lower the temperature, the solution would take longer to go cloudy, because the collisions between hydrochloric acid and sodium thiosulfate would occur less frequently, and the collisions would be less effective. So this is an answer using collision theory to understand rate of reaction.